Hey, how's it going? It's Lee Halliday, and we're playing with the XState library, which allows us to build finite state machines in JavaScript, and we're also integrating it into our React app. And the state machine we're going to build today will be one that helps manage loading data. We've got a list of data where we load, say, the first 10 items, then we load the next 10, next 10, until we run out of data, and we want to manage all of that with this state machine. I'm in this cool visualizer tool that XState has and it allows us to see our state machines as we build it. So we're actually going to start building it here and then we'll copy it into our React code in a little bit. Um, the only thing I have so far is some dummy data here. It's just an array of 25 elements and then how many items we want to load sort of every time we go to fetch new data from our data source. So we'll start with a variable called the data machine and we'll initialize a new machine. So anytime you have a machine, you want to give it an ID. It's like its name, basically. And we want to tell it what state it should be at the beginning when it first fires up. So we're going to fetch data right away as soon as it sort of kicks off. So we'll make the initial state loading. But let's see what states we actually have to work with. So we'll define our states property. So this is where it gets its name, the finite state machine, because there's a finite number of states that this machine can transition from one to the next. So we will have a loading state, and we'll just make it an empty object for now, and we'll fill it in later. So after it's done loading, we've got basically two states we're going to work with. The first we'll call more. Basically, it's done, but there's still more data we could fetch from the server. Complete, meaning... Uh, we're, we're done loading the data, but there is no more. We're complete. And then we've got the failure state, which is if, it, if there's an error connecting to the, the server or whatever, um, it will transition to failure. So if we update this visualization now, we can visualize our four states, loading, more, complete, failure, and we see that it starts at the loading state. Now, X state provides a way to sort of indicate that some states are the final ones. You can't really transition anywhere once you get to them. So we'll define here that this is a type of final. And this one is also a type of final. Because if it's a failure or complete, um, there's nothing else to do. So that just changes the visualization and indicates that it's final. All right, so the next thing we want to do is tell it how it can transition from one state to the next, and it does that by listening to events. So the events we're going to have, so when we're in loading, what events are we listening to? So we'll say on. So we'll listen to done, and there's more. So that would transition it to the, the more state. It could be done, and it's complete. So that would transition to the complete state. Or it could fail which would transition it to the failure state. So if we update our visualization, we can now see that we go from loading, if it's done more, it would go to more, um, or if it's done complete, it would go to complete, etc. So what happens if we arrive to more? We basically want to give it a way to go back to loading and go fetch additional data from the server. So that means our more state will listen to an event called load which will tell it to go back to the loading state. So if we update this now, now we can see the loop. So we start in loading, it's done but there's more, we tell it to go fetch more, it's done but there's more, and then finally it's done but it's complete, and we end up in the complete state. So these are our finite states that we have to work with and how it can basically transition from one state to the next. But we're missing something. What about the actual data we want to load? So state machines, uh, all of your data isn't these finite number of states. You've got quantitative data that doesn't really fit into one or the other because we've got data available to us when we're both in the more and when we're in the complete. So xState gives us a way to manage this using the context. So context is where you define sort of all of your quantitative um, information. So we're going to keep track of the data that we have. And why don't we at this point transition from this visualization tool into our actual code. 
So I've just copied and pasted this and we're going to go into our React app. And after I paste this, I'll quickly give an explanation about what's going on. So we've imported um, use machine from XD React. That allows us to basically inject a machine and listen for updates to it within a React component. This is the machine that I uh, created a new instance of, and we'll talk about a sign in a little bit. Down here we have our actual component, the app, and right now it's rendering um, a div where we have a list inside of it. And this is where we'll eventually be mapping through our data to show a list item for every row of data that we have. Uh, right now it's just an empty array. We're going to show when the data is currently being loaded from the server, and we'll also give a button where we can tell it to go fetch more. So if you want to see what it looks like right now, we are showing the loading and we're showing the button, uh, but it's not doing anything. So let's start to hook it up into our state machine. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is that um, state machines in XState give you a way to basically invoke a service when it transitions into a state. So we will use the property invoke. So what are you able to invoke? You can invoke um, sort of nested state machines that live inside of this parent. You can invoke a promise, which is itself sort of like a state machine because promises have pending, resolved, and uh, failure states. Um, but the one we're going to be using is a callback. So we're going to give it a name called the data loader. And we'll define what this callback looks like. So when you use a callback, callback type of service that you want to invoke, um, it's a little bit complicated because you need to define a function. So this function receives the current context, which is all of our data here. It receives an event. So how did we arrive to the loading state? What event uh, sent us there? But where it gets a little bit tricky is that we actually have to return another function. And what this function receives is a callback and an on event. So what are these things? Callback is a way to basically send events back up to the parent machine. So we're able to send events to our data machine. And what events are we going to send? Basically done more, done complete, or fail. We can also to listen to we can listen to events coming from our parent. So maybe other actors are sending events to our, our state machine, like maybe someone wants to cancel loading data. So we can listen to this and maybe cancel the Axios call that we'd be making. But in our case right now, we're actually not going to use these two, and we're just going to focus on context and callback. So what do we want to do here? Um, the first thing that we want to do is how about we the first thing that we want to do inside of this function here is access the current data that we have so we can put that into a variable called data and its context like that the next thing that we want to do is basically go fetch new data from our data source, which is this uh, array up here. So we'll say const new data. And what are we going to do? We're just going to slice some data off of this array. So with slice, you give it a starting point and an ending point. So where we want to start is just the length of our current data. So at the beginning, it's empty, meaning length of zero. So slicing at zero will get us the first start at the zeroth element of our array, which is perfect. And we want to go up until, in this case, we're fetching it 10 records at a time. So we do data.length plus per page. Okay, so next, now there's a couple events we could send. It's either done, but there's more, or it's done, but it's complete. So why don't we create a variable called has more? And the way we'll determine if there's actually more is we'll just look at the data that we just got from our data source, the length of that, is that equal to the per page? If So if, if 10 is here and 10 is here, we're going to assume that there's more 
data to fetch. If we are only able to grab five from the array, well, then there's no more that we can load. So now what we can do is use this in an if statement where we've got an else as well, and we can send events up to our parent machine um, based on that. So the way you do that is you use the callback function. So callback, we're going to tell it which type of event we're sending. So this one would be done more. And then we can pass additional data that we want to send to that event. And we'll look at how to handle that in a second. So we're going to be passing our new data to this event. Okay, so down here we have another callback where we're doing a type of done complete. And we also want to send data when it's complete. In this case, there's really no way to trigger the fail because we're just slicing data from an array. But you can imagine that if this was grabbing data from like an Axios call on a server, maybe you'd want to have a try catch. And when you catch it, you could do a callback with the fail event to kick it over to the failure state. Now, because our data source is instant, just because it's an array, why don't we actually put it in a set timeout so we can just sort of simulate a little bit of slowness so that we can really see that it's loading. Now we've got data. So we'll just take all of this and put it into a set timeout and we'll give it a thousand milliseconds, so one second of wait time. So what we've done is we've called the callback function, we've told it what event we're sending, and we've given it the new data. But now we have to, in this event here, basically handle this new data, because we need a way to add it to our context up here. So the way we can do that is by converting this into an object, where this one here, um, we have to tell it where we want it to transition to once this event occurs. And I'll just save it like that. So when this happens, we transition to more, and we can also add the actions property. So actions are basically functions that we want to call when this event um, is, is captured. So now we're going to use that assign um, function that we imported. So assign's all about updating data in the context, this guy up here. So what we do is we call assign, and we give it an object, and we say that we want to update the data property of the context. And the way we do that is by giving it a function. And this function receives the current context, sort of our current state, and information about the event. And our goal is to basically produce the new data that should be sent up and placed in the context. So the way we'll do that is we will take our array and we'll add on the existing data. And then we'll add on the event.new data, like that. So we could clean this up a little bit, actually. We could um, destructure out the data property from the context. And then we could access the new data from the event. And we could even give it a default value, just in case, for whatever reason, we're not provided with any um, data. So we save it like this. and we now want to do the same for the done complete event. So I'm actually just going to, for the sake of time, copy this. And this one transitions to complete. OK, so I think we've got our state machine decent right now, but we haven't actually put things together into our React app. So that's what's next. So we'll come down here, and the first thing we want to do is use the use machine hook um, from XState React. And so use machine, and we'll give it our machine, which was the data machine. And what it gives us back are a couple things. The first one is something that typically is called current, and that's sort of the current state of the machine. That gives us access to what is the actual state. It gives us access to the context, etc. And we also get a send function, which allows us to send events to our state machine from inside of React. So once we have that, we can access our data from the current context, like that. So with our data, we can map the data rather than mapping the empty array. The next thing that we want to do 
is determine when to show this late this loading element. We don't want to always show it. we're not always loading data. So the way we can do that is we can ask if the current state matches loading. So if this is true, um, show the loading. So when do we want to show the load more button? We want to show the load more button when the current state matches more. Oops. Cool, save that. So when current matches loading, we'll show the loading. When it matches more, we'll show the more button. And the last thing we're missing is how do we handle actually sending the event to load more? So we have an on-click handler here. And what we do is we come into the function that's called when that occurs, and we would use send, and we would send the load event to our machine. So keep track, we're in more, and we're sending it the load event. So if we come up and look at our state, when we're in more, we have, we're listening for the load event, and what should happen? We should transition to the loading event. So that would kick us up here to the loading state, and as soon as we enter loading state, we invoke this um, service, which will load data from our uh, data source. And once it's loaded the data source, it will trigger either the done more or the done complete events. Those events will run some actions when it happens to basically take that new data and combine it with the existing data in our context and then update the context to match. And that will cause React to re-render, and we can show the new data. So let's actually try this out. Woo! All right. State object mapping of transitions is deprecated. So maybe it's not called transition, it's two. Huh. What did I do wrong? I see. It's not to or transition, it's target. Sorry for all of that confusion. There we go. Okay, so when we load this, the initial state is loading, so that's why it goes into loading right away. It calls our service, which loads the first 10 elements from the array. And because there's more to load, it shows the more button. We click this, it's loading for a sec, and then when it has that, the data ready, it um, displays it. We load more again. It's loading. Now it's here. But we're not seeing the load more data anymore, and that must mean we're no longer in the more state. We're now actually in the complete state because we've loaded all the data um, that's available to us. So just to review this again quickly, we've created a data machine that has four states, loading, more, complete, and failure. And then we're using a service to actually load our data, and we're storing this data in the context. We've injected this state machine into our React app using the use machine, which gives us ability to access the current state of the machine and to send it, it, to send it events. So what's in current? We have the context, which is all of the data, but we also have a function called matches, which allows us to basically see uh, which state we're currently in. Hope you enjoyed this video. Take care. Have a good day. Bye.